and in 1967 graduated from Camden Academy High School. From there, I matriculated at Talladega College in Talladega, Alabama. Uh, there from 1967, receiving the BA degree in history in 1971. From there to Crows of Theological Seminary where I uh, received the MA degree in Black Church Studies in 1973 and the MDiv degree in Theology in 1975. Uh, from there, I studied at uh, Northwestern mm -hmm. University in Illinois, receiving a PhD degree in the history of religions with an emphasis on American Christianity in 1980. Uh, and since that time, uh, 1980, I've taught at a number of institutions, Worcester College in Ohio, mm -hmm. Colgate University in New York, uh, Colgate Rochester Divinity School in Roch Rochester, New York, and in 1984, I moved to Nashville, my wife and I, and I became a professor of religious studies at Vanderbilt University. I retired in 2013. And of course, that's the, the, that's the history and a reference, uh, uh, Dr. Baldwin, when we talk about your background, your education, and some of your experiences. And uh, we know it's, <coughs> excuse me, we know it so well, mm -hmm. but we wanted our audience to understand who we're dealing with this That's morning, right. the yes, uh, great yes. Dr. Lewis Baldwin. <laughs> and, and of course, Dr. Baldwin, the, this topic today, yeah. the change in character of uh, American, American political, political, life. political life. African American. Yeah, African -American. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's sort of give us a summary of that over well, the next couple well, of Well, I think we have to go <coughs> back to the death of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in 1968 and the shift from the social protest phase of the civil rights movement mm -hmm. to a stress on voter participation and political power. And I, what, I, what we want to do today is to talk about how the midterm elections mm -hmm. in 2018 connect with this kind of legacy that extends from Dr. King mm -hmm. and the social protest phase of the movement mm -hmm. up until the day. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you can understand what happened in the 2018 midterm elections, which were historic. Mm -hmm. You can't understand that without also reflecting on what happened Mm -hmm. uh, with the death of Dr. King and the changing character of the black struggle, uh, the shift from the social protest phase of the movement mm -hmm. to the emphasis on political power. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are talking about. And, and the 2018 midterm elections were historic. They were different in the sense mm -hmm. that you had heavy black po political participation. In fact, the 2018 midterm elections were among the most uh, important in the history of midterm mm -hmm. elections because you had a very heavy voter turn out, turnout, particularly in the black community mm -hmm. on the Democratic side. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you have more than 20 black women serving in the House of Representatives mm -hmm. today, okay? Mm -hmm. And that has to do with the fact that if the, the NAACP recently did a comprehensive study along with some other groups mm -hmm. of voter behavior in the black community in 2018. And they found that 90% that of blacks voted on the Democratic side. 88% of black men, 92% of black women. So, and you had historic turnout. In fact, there were more than 31 million people uh, turned out for early voting, which was historic. Now, uh, uh, Dr. Baldwin, over the last 17 seconds during this segment, I think what you're saying is what we've talked about for a long time, is that how do you get African Americans out to participate in the political process? Yeah. And I think what you're gonna talk about during this next segment is how that was done and as a model in reference to how we might be able to do that. And of course, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. They did. Exactly. And There's they, always been the idea that political power translates into said, economic that's, power. Mm -hmm, King mm -hmm. had that idea, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. we continue to. That's to right. And, with and, that. and so, yeah. And then we can talk about some of the 
the issues that motivated blacks to Good. vote in uh -huh. 2018, uh -huh. like health care mm -hmm. and the minimum wage. Thank you, and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. Uh, we're talking to uh, Dr. Lewis Baldwin, and he's given us some information in reference to African-American participation in, uh, in the change in character of African-American participation. And Dr. Baldwin, uh, uh, I won't follow up the title itself, mm -hmm. yeah. but uh, the idea here is that uh, there's been a change exactly. in African-American political participation. Exactly. And I want you to tell us about that change, but right. why did that change that we've all called right. for, yeah. why did it finally appear in 16, I mean in 2018? Well, much of the change has to do with the fact that black women have become pretty much the heart and soul of the Democratic Party. We remember in the late 19th century when blacks first moved into the political arena in the late 19th century in the South, uh, only men could vote. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the 2018 midterm elections, you will find that black women were the primary force driving what was happening in the, in the Democratic Party. Uh, more than 20 black women now serve in the House of Representatives. That's proof. Yes, That's uh, of the happened. power That's of right. the black woman mm -hmm. in, uh, Af in the changing character of African-American political life. You have, for an example, Lauren Underwood in Illinois, mm -hmm. uh, who won a congressional seat in a predominantly red or Republican district. Mm -hmm. You got Ayanna Presley, who is the first black woman elected to Congress from Massachusetts. You got uh, Yana uh, Hayes from Connecticut, who is the first black woman to uh, serve in Congress from Connecticut. So what you had in the 2018 elections, of course, was the emergence of black women as a force mm -hmm. in American political life. We saw that earlier, of course, in 2016 with the election of Doug Jones in Alabama okay, uh -huh. to the Senate. That was the beginning of e that, exactly. that transformation. Right. So, uh -huh. so what we are seeing today, I think, when we speak of the changing character, African Americans and the changing character of the national political life, we're talking primarily about black women. Mm -hmm. Now, we have to also take into account the issues that are driving black people to vote. They voted in record numbers in midterm election in 2018. But what, some of the, what were some of the issues that, that, in, that drove them to vote? Mm -hmm. And I think number one would be health care. Mm -hmm. uh, black people were very concerned in, in 2018 about uh, the protection of people with pre-existing conditions. Mm -hmm. They were very concerned about the increase in the minimum wage, about income equality, about the passage of a DREAM Act mm -hmm. that would protect the children of, uh, of illegal aliens mm -hmm. who were born in this country. Mm -hmm. They were concerned about uh, strengthening the Afford Affordable Care Act, uh, or Obamacare, mm -hmm. as they call it. So these were the kinds of issues that drove black people to vote in 2018, but we know that there was a record turnout mm -hmm. and that because of black voting, black people's voting, 90% for Democrats, you had what we call a blue wave. Mm -hmm. 40 seats were won by Democrats in the House of Representatives. House of and now uh, Democrats control the House of Representatives, but you can't talk about that uh, without mentioning, of course, the power of the black vote, mm -hmm. and particularly the importance of black women voters. You know, Dr. Baldwin, looking back over history, when we talk about reconstruction and et cetera, mm -hmm. how for the first time the African-American vote became important, and yeah. how there was a lot of opposition against that vote, and yeah. the uh, number of seats that they were even, black folks and et cetera. That's this right. is sort of reminiscent in a real sense exactly. uh, in reference to that particular time. Now, how do we maintain this kind of participation? Well, you know, we have to 
to, to stay abreast of the issues that confront this country today. We know that since the election of uh, President Donald John Trump, a number of issues have come to the forefront, issues like health care, climate change, uh, foreign policy issues, uh, issues of voter intimidation and suppression. All of these issues are important. And I think the important thing, of course, is to keep these issues before the black community. Uh, black leaders in our churches and in our educational institutions, our black politicians must keep these issues before the black community and impress upon them the importance of voting because voter power leads to electoral power Electoral power leads to political power. And political power leads to economic, economic power. power. Exactly. Uh, that's, so that's, you can't separate these, uh, these different uh, elements of how we move toward uh, empowerment in general. That's the same recipe that yes. was taken during the uh, period of Reconstruction. Exactly. And, and, and it's a uh, recognition. And, yes. and now what, but what happened uh, uh, during the Reconstruction uh, period, yes. if African Americans are not careful yes. in reference to what they are doing in reference to voter participation, there are a large number of individuals that are looking on exactly. that will come up with the same kind of opposition that happened during the Reconstruction period. Exactly. Would you say that? Exactly. And the difference from the Reconstruction construction period is that only men at that time mm -hmm. had the right to vote. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about 19, 19, 19, 20, women get the right, got the right to mm -hmm. vote. But the, the important thing today is that women in the black community are driving the political dynamics in this country, especially when it comes to the Democratic mm -hmm. Party. And 90% and, and of them voted for Democrats. And it, had it not been for black women, you wouldn't have had that blue wave. Blue wave. Uh -huh. Only 88% 88, 88 of black men voted, mm -hmm. uh, for 92% uh, of black women voted. And, and as a result, of course, you have a record number of black women now in the House of Representatives. You have an in, in the black women, black uh, people in the Senate. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the NAACP, interestingly enough, has has recently participated in a comprehensive study mm -hmm. of black voter behavior mm -hmm. during the 2018 mm -hmm. elections. And they found that had it not been for black voters, you wouldn't have had that blue wave. You, and, and so Dr. Baldwin, uh, during this last uh, few seconds in terms of this particular uh, segment, uh, the participation of Africans were not welcomed exactly. by the other political parties. And so we want to talk about uh, how that happened and, exactly. and some of the opposition in reference to that when we come back. Okay. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. I mean, we want to, I want you to go back during the Reconstruction period yeah. and compare some of the things that, see, we'll the eight-minute segment for yeah. that, of yeah. how, you know, black folks in, in, after Lincoln, yeah. in, in, now in uh, political participation, yeah. but they were soon, what, yeah. driven out. Driven out. And so what we want to Hopefully do Hopefully that won't happen. That, well, that's what I want to talk about. How, uh, what, what, what are some of the safeguards that yeah. we need to have yeah. in terms of keeping, because everybody else knows that African-American women and African-Americans played an important part in the uh, election, yeah. but now, what... Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. And we're talking to Dr. Lewis Baldwin and he's given us some information in reference to African-American participation in the uh, political process and some of the uh, history that mm -hmm. is associated with this participation. Yes. Let's do it from that perspective, doctor. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, now the important thing to remember is that we are at a point now in our history that is quite different from the period of Reconstruction. We know that when blacks were voted into office and state representative, at, uh, state congressional districts and, 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 and so forth, uh, Hiram Revels in Mississippi 
uh, became a senator in 1872. During that period, late 19th century, we know that blacks had a short-lived mm -hmm. participation in Good. politics mm -hmm. because by 1900, mm -hmm. they had been driven out, out now. of American political life, particularly in the South. Uh, uh, by uh, white extremist groups like the Klan and mm -hmm. others. Uh, the problem is we need to understand the need to maintain what is going on now so that we don't suffer the same results. Good. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to be forced out of the political processes. So what we have to do is stay abreast of the issues to make sure that we vote, as you said earlier, mm -hmm because there's been a problem in, 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 in recent mm -hmm. years with, with a lot of blacks turning out to vote because mm -hmm. they've given up on the political processes. Uh, we need to get our churches more involved and our educational HBCUs involved. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to get families more involved in, mm -hmm. in encouraging our people yeah. uh, to pursue political power. And the only way you can pursue political power is through voting. We don't want to suffer the same results that we suffered at the end of Reconstruction. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's why we have to keep before us this idea that if we don't vote, if we don't pursue political power, mm -hmm. if we don't work through the electoral processes, we'll be forced out. Mm -hmm. Because many of the issues facing us, like affirmative action uh, continues nah, to face us. Speak to that. Uh, affirmative action has been under attack mm -hmm. in recent decades. Mm -hmm. It will not be maintained without voter mm -hmm. participation, participation. Thank and, you. And, and black voter political right. power. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at gun control, which is a very important issue in the black community. Mm -hmm. Because as you well know, more of us die from gun violence than any other group in society. So if we're gonna address these kinds of issues, minimum wage, gun safety, uh, health care, if we're gonna address these kinds of issues, we have to make sure that we are as active in the political processes as we were in the 50s and 60s mm -hmm. in these civil rights mm -hmm. demonstrations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good, and of course, there. Uh, what, what about the economic situation of African Americans? Uh, well, that I think is the major problem here because since the days of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., there's always been the idea that political power translates into economic mm -hmm. power. Uh, that hasn't happened up to this point, and, and, and unfortunately. And what we have to do, of course, is to make sure that economic issues are a part of the political agenda that these politicians put forth. Mm -hmm. For an example, 2020 is coming up soon. The election mm -hmm. of a president, you got Cora Booker, Booker involved, mm -hmm. you got Kamala Harris, mm -hmm. uh, who are African Americans who are running for president. We have to make sure that they are addressing mm -hmm. the kind of economic issues mm -hmm. that impact the black mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. You just don't talk about uh, issues uh, that relate to foreign policy mm -hmm. or climate change, et cetera. Mm -hmm. What about minimum wage? Mm -hmm. What about economic equality? What about taxes? What about Social Security and Medicare and Med Medicaid? Mm -hmm. These are the kinds of issues that I think are very important to the black community, and we have to make sure that not only the black uh, candidates who are running for president, mm -hmm. but all oh, of the mm -hmm. candidates, particularly on the Democratic mm -hmm. side, that these issues remain at the forefront of their consciousness, mm -hmm. that they are constantly talking about these issues and how they might impact the African-American community. Do you think the National Democratic Political Party is aware of the influence of the African vote in uh, the uh, past election? I think so. Mm -hmm. I think the uh, consciousness of the impact of the black vote goes back to the election of Doug Jones in Alabama uh -huh. in 2016. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah, that was historic because uh, you know, have a Democratic senator winning in Alabama, mm -hmm. which is a red state. Mm -hmm. And we know that black women voted 98% for Doug, mm -hmm. Doug Jones. So I think there's an, in, in, with the 2018 elections and the increase in the number of black women and black people in general and also LGBT people mm -hmm. in Congress, 
uh, Muslims, a couple of Muslims uh, won congressional seats. So you have more diversity because of the black vote. And I think uh, Americans in general have become increasingly more mm -hmm. conscious mm -hmm. of the importance and the impact of the black vote mm -hmm. and, 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 and how that impacts American political life in general. And the only thing that could continue that is black people getting out and voting. Yes, yeah, if you don't vote, that, you don't I, complain. None of this is important. If you don't vote, you don't have a mm -hmm. voice. Mm -hmm. And I think we've heard that message from, since the days of Dr. Martin Luther mm -hmm. King Jr. Mm -hmm. That when we vote, we have a voice. When we vote, we participate in a particular socioeconomic agenda. Mm -hmm that drives this society, that sustains this society. So it's very important that we vote. And it's important to understand that there are folks who would like to uh, diminish or eliminate the African-American participation, uh, gerrymandering and various Exactly, other kinds gerrymandering of is a major problem, voter intimidation, voter suppression. Mm -hmm. We are addressing those kinds of issues now. Mm -hmm. And hopefully by the 2020 presidential election, uh, we would have eliminated some of these mm -hmm. problems, and, you know, still working on them. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have to be ever vigilant and mindful of what's going on mm -hmm. with the political processes in this country. We have to be informed. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very, very important. And I'm very encouraged by the fact that there was such heavy participation from the black community mm -hmm. in the 2018 midterm mm -hmm. elections. Mm -hmm. You're talking about historic elections. Mm -hmm. and, and that gives me hope for the future mm -hmm. in terms of how black people impact American and, political and life. And it's all, you talk about equality. Equality is the ability to have equal access to the polling. Mm -hmm. To the ballot. That's right. It, ballot. It, it, Not it, only equal access to the ballot, mm -hmm. you, more of us have to become involved mm -hmm. as politicians. Mm -hmm. We have to get to run for governor of different states. Mm -hmm. We have to run for the House, seats in the House of Representatives, the Senate. And, and I think we'll see more of that in the future mm -hmm. from, from black people mm -hmm. because we know that this country is becoming increasingly more brown and black. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that, that you will see more and more African Americans running for political office at all levels of society, mm -hmm. local, regional, state, federal levels, you'll see more and more of that in the future. And so Dr. Baldwin, all of the, this discussion is based upon the fact that it's very, very easy to find a solution if people, what, voted. If I mean, they if vote. To vote is everything in reference to African-American political participation, African-American economic participation, everything that has anything to do with anything can be traced back to the, the vote. vote. Which is a, a source of power. power. Mm -hmm. It's when we all have power, power. Uh -huh. we can go and push that button uh -huh. and, and, and vote for the candidate that represents our, vo our views, our vision, mm -hmm. our sense of what the future should be. So it's, it's our source of power. Mm -hmm. And if you don't exploit that source of power, you're left out. Mm -hmm. And of course, Dr. Baldwin, uh, over the last 20 seconds, let me uh, thank you for <clears throat> bringing by again that excellent information and to uh, tell you how delighted we are to have an opportunity to have access to you. And let thank me encourage you.